<laughs> it's uh, nice to see you uh, here, even though you're not here. Um, it's, uh, it, it, I've been looking forward to doing this session for quite a while. Uh, it's always interesting for me to see what's coming up in the, uh, in the world of digital and uh, how we can share our music that way. Um, I'm Alex Clark. I'm the assistant librarian with the uh, Vancouver Symphony. And I'm joined with, by Aurelia from Music, uh, as well as Bevis from, uh, let me make sure I get this right, Boozy and Hawks, and right. all from SHOT. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so this session today, we're, uh, we kind of wanted to break into two things. Uh, we wanted to ask, um, I, wanted, I was thinking we could ask the music publishers some questions about uh, what they see as their future for uh, distribution of parts and scores uh, and I also think it would be good for us to find out a little bit more about music uh, because Aurelia is here uh, but that doesn't mean that it, digital distribution is only music we are going to talk about other ones as well uh, so I'm certainly curious from the publisher's perspective uh, where we can uh, who else what other options there are as well and what you guys are, are working on um, so should we just uh, jump right into that Hi everyone. Yeah, oh. so Does anyone want to start with the uh, introductions? Yes. Uh, yeah, please, Bevis, please try start the introduction. I'll just do some settings. Sure. Well, um, thanks very much for the invite, first of all. Um, I, I work for Breezy and Hawks. Um, I'm VP of the rental services uh, department there. Um, and I've, I've known Aurelia for maybe, maybe three years or so, something like that. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's probably about it for now. Okay, then I will go on. Hello? Yes. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Paul, okay. Hello. So now I'm live. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm Paul, uh, Paul Schaeffer from Shot Music Minds. I'm one of the editors uh, for contemporary music in the concert opera media department. Uh, so we are working with the higher materials, especially. And I'm in contact with music since about two years or something like this. And now we are working together. Yeah, that's quite all. Yeah, so maybe my turn. Uh, Aurelia Azulegeta, so uh, music uh, co-founder. Uh, we've been working with uh, music publishers for many years, and uh, it's uh, basically thanks to uh, to the work we're doing with music librarians. So it's a, a virtual circle. Uh, we have uh, multiple music institutions using our digital uh, tools to uh, order, distribute, manage, share uh, digital sheet music. And I'm very happy that we can all gather and just discuss all of the hot topics about digital scores, especially on this, uh, on this period. We're very happy about that. Great, so um, I guess we should just start with some questions uh, for the publishers. Um, I, I'm curious about what, what is your opinion of digital distribution? And I don't necessarily mean um, personally, but uh, uh, maybe your, your, the companies you work for. Um, I'd be interested personally as well, but uh, what, what's your opinion about how, how things are right now and where they're going? Shall I, shall I kick off? Sure, let's start with you. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it, it, it's a big question, obviously. I mean, I, I would I begin by saying that, um, you know, our sort of, our main drivers um, at Boozy and Hawks are being led by the end users and their, their requirements. Um, so reading through the lists that were uh, of questions that were sent to us, Alex, I, I hope that we might have a, a chance to um, ask some of them back to the orchestras mm -hmm. um, at some point, but maybe later in the session. I think the, you know, the, the, the key thing I, I remember sort of 15, 20 years ago where um, we would receive requests from orchestras for faxed pieces of sheet music because somebody had lost their part or they wanted an, an advanced part to practice from or all the rest of it. That then became requests for PDFs. Um, and with it came sort of, you know, some issues with security and circulating too many PDFs. Um, so, 
you know, digital delivery via a provider's ecosystem is really key for us as publishers. Um, but it brings with it lots of challenges as well, you know, on our side and also the orchestra's side, I, I, I'm aware. Um, but I, I think it's a value add. I think it's a value add um, for publishers, um, potentially. And I think it's definitely a value add for orchestras that, that um, you know, it delivers on the end user's need for immediate access to this content. Um, so working with companies like Music, um, you know, we hope that, you know, we can all work together and, and provide a service that, um, you know, that I think has been needed for some years now. Great. Paul, do you have any thoughts? What are your opinions on digital distribution right now? I think uh, digital digitization is good for uh, for music publishers as well as for the customers. And I think we are on a good way. For me, I'm not that long in that business, so I can't talk about the, last, the past uh, 15 years, but I can talk about the past five years. And I think we started a new way, a very fast way of digitization in the uh, orchestral score business. Um, I think what is really important uh, for us is that we don't have um, one application for each publisher. So it's not, uh, it's not good if you as customers has to work with a shot app or a boozy app or a whatever app. So I think we have to, uh, we have to have uh, one solution app uh, for as many contents as possible so that we don't have to change for every publisher. And this is something I think um, we, we see it right now. We see it in the last two or three years that there are other uh, providers, there are third parties, which are doing a very good, good job. And we are very happy that for now we have the solution to have a digital distribution, uh, which was not possible before. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's in encouraging that, uh, for, for me at least, that uh, you're looking at uh, trying to find sort of one solution for these things. Um, I, I wonder if, if it might be good to have a little bit of, uh, of competition in that, in that market. I, I'm thinking like, I, I know music is here right now and we're, we're talking with them. Um, but is it, it's sort of the Mac versus PC thing that, uh, that I always wonder about. It's good to, good to have both of them in, out there so that uh, they can work together. Are, um, are there any thoughts about, uh, about that kind of thing? Or, or are, we, are we really trying to find a way to get to just one distribution source? I think for, from, from Boozy and Hawk's perspective, at least, we've all always tried to be flexible with our offering and we yeah. don't want to, we, we want to be non-exclusive um, with our catalogue. Um, uh, you know, our, our initiatives have been, um, there have been several initiatives over the last sort of five or 10 years with lots of different suppliers. Um, and that has sort of led our internal decision about how we can be as flexible as possible. Um, and we've, we've been developing in-house a, a digital asset management system, which we, we're confident gives us a kind of a, a solid base to which we can you know, link all of these DSPs to and provide whatever content um, they would like from us in the format that they re require it. Um, I mean, the, the obvious, um, apart from music, of course, the obvious other provider out there is Encoder. Um, so we, I think Boozy and Hawks was the first or one of the first publishers to, to speak to Encoder um, soon after its inception in 2015. Um, we now have 2,000 or more rental titles, score and parts on Encoder, um, 4, 000, upwards of 4,000 print titles. So that, you know, that's a that's an initiative we've been working on for four or five years. Um, we, I, Boozy and Hawk's online score section on the website, I mean, we, we, we're adding to that every day and we consider that a, you know, a digital initiative as well. Um, 
giving easy access to to full scores to whoever might need it. Um, we've spoken to Blackbinder in the past, a Spanish um, provider. Their their sort of USP is scrolling sheet music, so no need for page turns at all. Um, and of course, Symphonia, where it might not be providing digital material, it is at least something which, you know, this world needed then. And I think they, you know, in order to glue us all together, publishers and orchestras and service, digital service providers, something like Symphonia, which we were an early adopter of and, and, in, and an investor in, um, is key to all of this to kind of bind us all together. So several initiatives at Boozy and Hawks. And, you know, I, I had another two emails in my inbox last week from another two providers of digital content, slightly different um, to music and encoder. So every week that goes by, almost every day that goes by, there's another initiative to go and explore. Um, yeah, so competition is good though, Alex, back to your point. Competition is definitely good. Um, some of these services will suit or certain orchestras better. Um, so yeah. Um, I, I, uh, thanks for that. I, I think it's a good segue and I want to get back to Zinfonia in a bit, but uh, the, the next question was, um, what are your digital initiatives? So um, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, viewing a score on the Boozy and Hawks website. The first time I, I found that I was, I was thrilled. <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> um, maybe Paul, do you want to talk about some of your digital initiatives from, from shop right now? I think the most interesting uh, initiative was the digitali digitalization of uh, engraving. I think this was one of the first steps. And now we are uh, that good that we can have other, other things uh, coming up. So for us, it's also the Perugia scores on our website to, to have a look on this. For now, you can have works for sale um, from our website as PDF. So you can you can buy titles there, not the higher works, but the sales works. Um, we have quite other things in house. So we have the digital asset management as well as the digital printing application with which we work. So this is one of the of the main conditions to having uh, an, a third party in uh, with us uh, for digital distribution. Uh, so I think we made quite something for the customers, uh, but we made more in-house uh, for digitization. And uh, for now we can, we can offer higher scores, higher material, digital. So um, yeah, I think that's quite, quite good, but it's not the end of the way. It's the beginning, I think so. Well, and it's also, it's, I mean, coming from an orchestra, perspective it's 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 not something that we can switch to overnight so it's it's something that uh, we, we want to see we want to see something a, a shift happen but we we aren't we aren't expecting to tell everyone tomorrow that everyone has to use an ipad or a, a surface or something to to read their music from now on um but uh, we do you know we, we're looking at at how we can get into that so none of us i think are moving too quickly in in, in terms of digital initiatives but um yeah, Bevis, do you have any, any follow-up to the question about digital initiatives? I, I think it's, uh, I, I want to uh, come to one point of view. I think it's not, um, the solution could not be to digitize the whole orchestra. I think um, we have customers who start in the backstage, um, uh, in the backstage area, for example, stage managers or uh, Libra librarians or something like this uh, who work with digital solutions and after that some orchestra says okay that's very interesting and we want to join with the whole orchestra but especially for opera house, houses it could be interesting to have for example vocal scores uh, shared in a team for directors for um, for stage uh, for stage managers stage designers everything else so this is I think one of the um, one of the points where it can step in this part of digitization. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good resource for a librarian to have a <laughs> digital score somewhere. I think. Um, so, can you tell me about how your experiences have gone so far with some of these, I, I, Paul? I remember a webinar from a few weeks ago where um, there was some discussion about Opera, 
and um, opera scores backstage and, and how do we how do we know how many opera scores we need well we can always buy 10 more if we need them uh, and then they they appear on on 10 more iPads but uh, how how has this experience been so far with uh, like what what kind of things have you have you found have happened that you maybe didn't expect or or things that uh, you find that you still need to improve that's difficult to say um, I think the first experiences were very good. I think for both parties, for the publishers as well as for the customers, we have the big problem that not our whole catalog is digitized uh, right now. So we have about 16,000 higher titles or something like this. And I think nearly 6,000 are um, in a digital data or something like this. So there's much to do. And this is one of the, of the problems we have to solve. Uh, but um, uh, on the other hand, I think we are we are just right now to start um, creating new perspectives of uh, digital material. It's not for now. We have a PDF, which is a printed. It's like a printed score. Uh, it's it's only one D, but we need a three D score in part so that we can uh, that we can have the opportunities of digitization in the orchestral parts and scores so like for example uh, that we that that the, the 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 data of the full score knows where bar 74 is in the uh, orchestral part so that we can mark only the the, the full score or something like this is this is something i think which could um, come from this but for now, I think we are starting with this, and uh, we the, the the feedback of the customers is quite good, and they 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 are very happy. And for us, it's good to uh, get these kind of feedbacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's I'm glad you brought that up. The idea of the PDF being sort of a one-dimensional thing, um, because I'm I'm curious about. Sort of like this is talking about the future of, of of digital distribution. I'm curious about what the what kind of things we can look forward to in the future about um, maybe from from companies like Finale and Sibelius or uh, those companies. Are we are we going to see? I know uh, Music has an XML format uh, reader that works really well for expanding uh, and and seeing things bigger. Um, and the first time I showed a musician that uh, I've, I've showed a few of them and uh, some of them are like, oh, that's the best thing I've ever seen. And some of them are like, that doesn't look like the same page anymore. I'm used to this bar being over here. So, I mean, there's no there's no perfect system, I guess. But uh, well, can, can we expect some more things like XML coming from publishers at some point? For my personal point of view i hope so but it's very 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 uh, you're describing the problem very good because with xml it's uh, it's it's too too open data yeah so we lose everything okay. a publisher is known for like good page turns or good cue notes or something like this and um for for us music xml is too too open yeah um we have to find another kind of um, d data system um, yeah I think I think this because every publisher has his own his own style his own house style I think think so and this is something we would lose totally if we only use uh, XML data and it's quite unsecure yeah so um, we must have the control of our content uh, so that at some point it's not it's not allowed to transpose an area up and down as you would like to do it because the uh, the, the protected composer uh, for, forbids this and so yeah we have to search for a good a good solution yeah yeah that, that's great um, I wonder if publishers are, are investing in in uh, figuring those those formats out right now is there are, are there where where does that need to come from uh, if if not the publisher? Well, I think I you know going back I don't know maybe eight eight or nine years I think there was a real kind of the uh, appetite 
from the publishers to want to try and solve this digital delivery problem themselves. Mm. Um, and it was all very well meaning and a lot of time was spent in, we all spent a lot of time interacting with other publishers trying to get to the nuts and bolts of the problem and see if we could come up with a joint solution. And the simple fact of the matter is that our focus as publishers is providing content. Um, it's where our expertise lies. Um, and I think we all learned in some way um, that we probably weren't best suited to software development. Um, so I, I think it, I, speaking for Boozy and Hawks, but possibly more publishers, it's not something we're necessarily equipped to deal with. And so companies like Aurelia's, um, we really, you know, it's, it's in all of our interests to try and work as well as possible to kind of feed into the, um, the idea bucket um, and, and try and make the best solution possible. So my, I suspect you won't see, at least any time soon, any, any development of, of, of that kind from a, from, a, from a music publisher. Okay, well, th thanks again for the segue here. Uh, I think we, we just need to start asking about uh, music. Uh, what, what is music? And I, I don't expect you to tell us too much about Encoda or any other competitors, but uh, I just thought I'd mention them so that people know that there are other, other options. But um, can we start with uh, what is music, just for yeah. those of us who haven't seen this before? And that's a great transition because I was trying to raise my hand when they said like, our <laughs> lies on the, on the music and that's completely our point of view. As Paul described it, we're a third party uh, technology that the goal of this uh, technology is to gather all of the music publishers around on the same platform to let music librarian make the orders for rental, for purchase. So that's a good uh, starting point for me to start uh, explaining what is music without digging into details. We are a French based company. So here I'm, I'm speaking with you from Paris. Uh, we launched uh, the iPad version uh, in 2015. This is a cloud-based solution for uh, sheet music uh, distribution performance. And we really understood uh, after a lot of consultations with a music librarian that the web and computer tool was uh, uh, mandatory. It was a pure necessity. So since 2020, we launched the web version of music. And today our uh, track record is mostly about uh, orchestras that use music for performances. So I, I saw one comment from Marc uh, Fabulic to share my experience with the stage managers of the Vienna State Opera. They all have iPads, they all make markings. All the markings are shared in real time with the other uh, stage managers and stage directors. So they save a lot of time and a lot of uh, energy. They can add pictures, videos uh, on the top of the PDF files. Uh, so we have multiple uh, use case, uh, and this is one out of uh, the, the others. So that is uh, music's definition, where a technology uh, cloud-based system for sheet music, where you can import your own uh, digitized file, uh, or you can order uh, works, digital works from music publishers. And I, that's why, uh, we're here today, so I'll focus my explanations on, on these uh, specific parts. Great. Um, so I guess I'm curious about um, how many publishers, is this, is this a thing that, uh, that, that you're going to get music from everyone? Uh, do you have a select group? Uh, I guess is the goal to get music from everyone? What's, uh, what, what can uh, what kind of, what other publishers are involved is uh, the the next question I've got for you. So I haven't prepared this question. Yes, I prepared this question. <laughs> On board. Uh, this is the list, but uh, again, we need your uh, your insights to uh, let us know which publishers are missing, uh, who would be very important to have in our um, in our uh, list. So it's not just a list, all of the publishers described below and including uh, Shot and, uh, and uh, Boozy are using a platform so that they can distribute with all the security uh, files, digital files uh, with an expiration date. So that's the main uh, point uh, I would like to, um, to focus on. You gain security because the files are completely embedded into the music ecosystem. 
and you have the expiration date so that you can really enjoy uh, the file until the end of the expiration date, but you keep all of your markings so that when you need to renew your contracts, when you need to uh, reorder the same uh, digital work, you don't have to do the same process of putting again all of the Boeings and then uh, distributing the Boeings. It's really, everything is, is stored in our uh, servers. So this Great. is- uh, And, and I, I know we've, we've had this conversation before, but I'm, I'm always curious about things like Boeings can, um, uh, it's, sometimes it's really nice to have Boeings arrive in parts uh, already. Uh, sometimes it's terrible. <laughs> um, so depending on how many changes are made, uh, I, I know that can that can really wreck my day uh, if they come back full of X's. But um, is uh, is is it an option to get uh, Boeing's from previous performances uh, from other orchestras? Do you think orchestras are going to uh, want to keep that secret and keep their Boeing's to themselves? Uh, what have you got any feedback from orchestras about that kind of thing yet? Yes, I think it's. Uh up to the orchestras. If they wish to share the markings for uh, branding uh, purposes, because it's, uh, it's interesting to enable music publishers to share clean versions with the markings of uh, this orchestra or the other. So it's, it's an option that you could activate on the platform so that you can let the publisher reshare the markings to other orchestras. But this will be completely, uh, this is not uh, active yet in the system. But once it will be done, it will, it will be very visible and explicit. So if you wish to share the markings, you just click on, I want to share my marking. If it's not the case, you just uh, don't click on this uh, button. I, I wonder, uh, Bevis and Paul, do you guys have any thoughts on, um, on, on the sort of evolution of, of, of a piece based on markings and things that come from different people? Will, will, will you be looking at uh, getting markings from conductors perhaps uh, to, to sort of supplement your, your collections or is that uh, something that isn't being considered? I mean, I, I, I guess this is, this is, you know, part of the, the value add perspective of something like this. Um, so, you know, the details about who, whose right it is to, sh to share those Boeings and, you know, all the rest of it is, um, you know, still, I guess not, not decided, I would say, um, but you know, it, it's such a value add that you know it, it makes sense for it to be you know a, a, an available perk of the system. So, however it's managed, I mean, I'm not sure how it's managed in music um, or encoder for that matter. I you know something with encoder, I think the the real uptick there has been private individuals practicing parts at home for the first time because they can for the first time. Um, so I'm not sure whether there, there are bodies of markings for full orchestras available anywhere yet because it's such early days. Um, but it's an obvious, it's an obvious perk from digital delivery. Mm -hmm. Shall I continue, Alex? Yeah, let's let's uh, let's go on. Um, so the next question is how how do you make digital orders with the system with music? How does uh, how does it work? Uh, if I'm a librarian sitting in, at my desk at work and we're allowed to play music again, um, how does how does it work for me to make a rental order through music to yeah. the publishers? So I'll do my best not to be uh, technical and show you some features because that's not the purpose. Just for you to have a um, a big picture of, of what we do. You have the platform for music institutions, what's in uh, orange, and what music publishers are, are using. So when you need to make an order to receive uh, digital works, it's uh, the most basic way, uh, meaning it's an email, a form, a phone, to your agent or the direct publisher. So we don't want to uh, change the way you're dealing uh, with the, the representant or the publishers. You have the same contact point and you just make the request per email. So if I make a recap on the next slide here, let's say I want to order the piece X and I need to send an email to publisher Y. I'll send the name of the piece my music account, so that's a must. You need to uh, have a music account. To do so, it's from a, a computer, it's a free account, you just create one account. So that the publisher would send you 
through the platform directly to your account as a music librarian with some power. So it's whether power or restriction, you have the power or not to print out the, the desired uh, work. And you can ask a certain amount, number of licenses. So I underline, I put uh, accesses in brackets because it's not a licenses of copyright and pro legal protection issues. It's how many screen access you would like to provide with your members. And the fifth part is the expiration date. So why is it in uh, red? It's because that's the only place where you can be restricted in your digital use of the work. So the watermark or the blue square is exactly what will happen after the expiration date or if you share to N plus one persons the content. So let's say I want to have uh, 70 uh, licenses, accesses to a specific piece. I'll share my link to all of my members. If there is a 70, the 71st person that will open this link will not be able to view it, so it would have the watermark. So that's exactly uh, the, the way it works. You can open the piece, you'll have a watermark whether you expired, um, the, the rental has expired, or it's, it doesn't, uh, uh, respect the total number of people that can read this music. The printing option is very basic. If you don't have the printing option, you, can, you cannot export in PDF and you can uh, eventually not um, print out. So that's what, how it works. And a quick um, explanation on, on the license. With digital works, it's completely different. Uh, it's not a per part, per stand uh, way of thinking. It's per work. So when you order a piece, you order the full work. So the full score, the parts, the piano reduction, potential media files, uh, or a YouTube link, anything. And it's all uh, combined in the same folder. You have the responsibility as a music librarian, depending on the number of members that you would like to share this piece with, to just share this uh, content and assign some extra restrictions to your members but the music publisher will send you the full package with all the meta uh, restrictions, and then you'll uh, share this content to the other persons. If I'm violin one, I'll have the full score, the violin one, violin two, etc. And you can decide that the violin one would not read the other parts, but it's really up to the music library's decision. It's not from the music publisher side. Okay, so what about the, like, the search function? Like if, um, if, if I need to get a a piece from Boozy and Hawks, and I'm in the music app. And is there, is that, do I, do I get a full catalog of all the works? Do I, is it a search online? Do I have to go through Zinvonia uh, or, or, or another, a different third party uh, situation? Um, maybe this is a question for everybody, but how, how do you envision that working best? Yeah, so just to answer, because um, what is it, as of today, it's an on demand request. So you'll have to send an email to the, to the representant and to make this request. Of course, our goal is to just to make a clear platform where you just uh, browse and uh, search the piece and then uh, get uh, the quote, the automatic quote. We are also very open to uh, being embedded into the Zinfonia system because it's also very uh, relevant. So I think this is our next step. Now we managed to just set all the restrictions and the, the environments uh, that are, are uh, that is completely um, secure. Now we are working on uh, scaling this and enabling a uh, music librarian to make a search and just find the piece, request a quote and receive in like a, a minute the, the desired piece. Paula, were you going to jump in there for something? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's important to, 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 to understand that nothing will change in the process of ordering uh, a piece. Yeah, it's just the way of getting uh, the score and the orchestral material. So we, for for shot, we always talk about music or encoder or Blackbinder or something like this, like the digital UPS guy. Yeah, it's nothing. Uh, the, the 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 whole uh, billing system, the whole um, uh, delivery, everything else 
is working as it works with a normal printed material. So you have to make an order to your agent or, or to, to the publisher or what, what else, to your agent in your country. And then they will manage the, the whole process. And in that case, if you order something, just give your music ID and say, okay, I would want to hire it with music or or is it possible to hire this with you with music? So, and then the agent get in, will get in touch with the original publisher and ask for the details and if it's possible and everything else. Right. Okay. So, um, in that case, uh, I'm thinking about my experience with the orchestra I'm I'm with. Um, a lot of our musicians prefer to have uh, printed parts. I mean, a lot of them uh, are intrigued by playing from an iPad, but a lot of them are also thinking, uh, maybe maybe I don't ever want to do that. I always want to have my printed parts. So I, I want to use my pencil. That's, you know, I'm just, that's just how, how I work best. Um, are, you, are you worried about, uh, about giving printing permissions? Because I know a lot of orchestras will want both. So you, you always have the option to rent a printed material too. So this is uh, nothing which can't be combined. So we, we have orchestras where uh, some guys of the violin section are playing with printed material and some people are playing with, with iPads uh, or from iPads. So this is nothing, um, yeah. And for the printed material, I think we have a we have way right now where you can buy higher material. So if you want to keep, for example, a score in your library or something like this, you can ask the publisher if you can get a printed uh, or a, a, a score, a full score to buy. And this is always given. So I don't think we have to change this system that you can buy, that, that you can print out on your own the 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 files but i think we can we can we can talk in every situation about this All right okay um maybe we'll just jump back to our our next prepared question here about um how to share with uh, how to share two musicians um so this is uh, getting back into sort of the the way music works um how do we how do we get the musicians in the orchestra the parts that they need mm -hmm. Uh, it's very simple. You, once you receive the, um, the full piece and the full digital work as a music librarian and you have the 70 licenses, you either generate a link and then share this link by email and then all of the musicians would import this link. Uh, or you just share within the, the application, so the iPad version, the project, including all of your members, existing members. So it's whether outside of the iPad or inside, it's, uh, it's really up to the, like if, whether you have this type of device. And um, no matter you have music or not, you, you just need to create a music account to receive the, um, the files and to be part of, of um, the, the project environment created by the librarian. So there is, uh, set up to do from the librarian's perspective, but as a musician, I just receive a link. It will ask me to uh, to create my account and then uh, read this link. Right. And what about the costs for this uh, yeah. for this stuff? Uh, I know a lot of us are concerned about that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> is this going to cost us a lot more uh, than than the current way that we're doing things? Is I guess another way to phrase that question. Yes. So. For the, for the costs, there is a real difference between the pricing applied by the music publishers and the pricing for the software usage. So maybe we'll discuss this later, but I, I, there is an interesting question. For the, for the print and the digital order, uh, there would be a, um, um, a pricing, a dedicated pricing from the publisher's perspective. From our perspective, uh, it's the access of the software and nothing, uh, nothing else. So I, I've designed like a very uh, quick uh, table just to, to let you understand that if you use uh, the score for individual purposes, let's say you need to uh, check a perusal score or as a music librarian, you really need to double check something to make sure you make this order. So when you have a dual relationship between the music publisher and you, it's completely free because you receive it and you don't need to share it to, um, to other members. So it's a full free uh, version. When you need to share uh, the music, uh, the digital works to members, 
you'll need to work on the project environment. That's a feature we have. It's a collaborative world where you can set restrictions, delegate some rights, and it's a very protected environment. And in that case, it's per user based. So let's say you need to share it to 100 persons, it will be four uh, euros or dollars almost per year per user. So that's for a real intensive usage of, of the system when you really need to share with your musicians. Right. That's the price. Um, I'm, I'm wondering about, is there an option for, uh, and this is probably a question for the publishers to answer, but is there an option for someone uh, for a librarian to uh, have a, a bit more access than sort of the general public. Um, if, if say for instance, my concert master comes to me and says, I want to look at all the music for the year. Um, can, can I, maybe, maybe it's September now and, and the concerts in June and, and our rental period isn't, isn't until April or so. Um, can I, can I still get a look at the, at, the violin one part to, to share with them without getting the big blue watermark? Uh, is that something that, that we, you can make available or is it is already? So the question is, uh, the what, if, if it's uh, after the expiration that you have the watermark, but what's really interesting, it's uh, the publisher's platform is really flexible so they can at any time unveil the watermark uh, on request okay. and then put it again, it's, it's, a, it's a simple button. So that's a conversation librarians will have with publishers um, down the road when, when we need them. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Great. Um, okay, well, uh, I think, do, are we set up for, sorry? I, I finished uh, my prepared question. Uh, I'm okay. opening this, uh, this window before uh, opening the question and answer because Good. we have some, um, if you want to try uh, on your own uh, how to receive digital files, uh, we have the, um, the chance to get some uh, free accesses. It's free for one week, so you'll have the watermark on your computer or iPad uh, after one week. But if you're interested in, in getting this, let us know. We'll send you uh, uh, this request on, on the survey that will be sent after the webinar. So uh, feel free to just uh, make your request and, and you'll receive this content after the session. All right. Well, if if uh, if we're set up for questions and answers, uh, can we uh, could we maybe uh, start with that? Is there anyone who has a question for us right now? So you can you can by the way raise your hand and we can make you speak. Uh, in the meantime, I, I see on the chat a question, uh, Alex. Maybe do do you access the have access to the question? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Robert, Olivia. Um. Okay, so the question says, uh, can the publishers talk about the digital distribution of rental music that can be performed in non-digital format, i.e. rental music sent to library via PDF? So the library can print the scores in parts, uh, therefore being able to keep a loan set. Uh, given, the, uh, given the desperate financial times of the orchestra's renting music readers, uh, rent, ah, sorry, just lost it, where did it go? Yeah, I think there was a, there was, there was a question related to you know, the cost of the hardware maybe in being a barrier towards being oh um, yeah between yeah, being yeah, able to use music or any other provider i you know on 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 the topic of printing it it's it's a one it it's something that we're as publishers nervous about because we we owe it to our composers um to look after their their works and make sure that we know what's being performed and when um and the traditional business model of rental is that we, if we don't get a set back, we know that it's with somebody. The problem with allowing printing is that as soon as you allow it once, you then don't know where that content is anymore. Um, I and my colleagues recognize that, you know, there, there are going to be some players who are happy to play from a screen and other players who are not. Um, and a librarian only wants to mark up one set of parts, not two, not digital and physical. They just want to mark up the digital and be able to use that even for those players who aren't using a screen. Um, but we're not, we, we just haven't, I think we just haven't convinced ourselves that, that, that we're, we're comfortable with allowing printing generally. Um, and I think we still, there's a bit of thinking to be done. Um, on whether we make certain parts of our catalog available for printing 
or certain orchestras are given permission to print certain things, but allowing blanket printing across our catalogue, particularly for higher works, is something that makes us slightly nervous. Um, but I think, you know, as, going back to Paul's point, which is that, you know, it is possible to order paper and digital together. That's going to be the case for decades to come, I think. Um, so that is always a possibility. Um, we have a question. Someone is raising their hand, Giovanni Waglia. Shall we allow Giovanni to talk? That's great, yeah. So, yes. And then we have a, a question from Matt Naughton after that. Yes, so you can talk, Giovanni. You just need to activate your, uh, the speakers. You're now muted. You're currently muted. Yes. Hello. There we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, nice. To, very interesting um, webinar. Uh, my name is Giovanni and calling uh, well, from the Chamber Orchestra of Europe. So we are a touring orchestra that uh, travels all around Europe. But we used to travel all around Europe like everyone else. And um, mm -hmm. I'm interested in, in especially the di digitization of music. But um, have you got, um, I'm, I'm, I'm asking already and anyone else has experience, um, have you got experience of uh, your musician when touring using um, iPads? Because when you're touring, sometimes uh, the problem with an iPad is that you may run out of battery and you are, um, and you, when you're traveling almost every day and doing a concert and maybe you sometimes even forget to recharge your mobile phone. So what would be about um, iPads? Because uh, if you give the players the responsibility to recharge their iPad every day, so sometimes they're not super reliable. So um, yes. is, it, is it something that has ever occurred to you or to some of your customers? Because yes. uh, we, we currently don't use iPads, also because uh, as you said before, some players would like to play from parts and other players like to play from iPads. Um, but uh, given also the age of some players uh, in the late, late 50s, 60s, so sometimes they say, oh, my eyesight is very poor, so I would never want to read from a screen during a concert. So just, just wanted to know your thoughts. Yes. So, um... I, I, I'm hearing this every day, and, and you'll be surprised to uh, to hear that uh, people from 50 to 60 years old find it uh, it's it's quite surprising, but find it more convenient to use digital screens because you can uh, set the lighting, and you can enlarge the music, and use colors, and use highlighters on the screen. So it's not necessarily um, based on the age when you see some. Okay. It's it's quite interesting, but conversely. When we do some uh, some uh, concerts with uh, youth uh, orchestras or young students, it's it's very unanimous. So they are all very familiar with digital systems, and they are it's it's very it sounds very natural to just use uh, iPads, tablets, anything. So I think that in if we 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 go in 20 years, it, the questions will be completely different because. Uh, music students will grow with the technologies and will just arrive on, in the orchestra and say like, yes, why, why we don't have uh, an iPad since we used it uh, while we were students. So that's the, the first uh, answer. So the age is not necessarily a, a barrier, but when you're young, it's, uh, it's uh, definitely uh, something positive for your orchestra. Regarding the touring thing, we've realized that when you use trucks, it's really convenient because you can, uh, you can put your iPads in a, a charging uh, cart where uh, you need, of course, to charge it before you go into the truck or right after uh, you arrive at the destination. So it's quite convenient to use trucks, uh, to use iPad carts. When you're taking the plane, you have to give the iPad to the musician. So you have to give more responsibility uh, to the musician. Sometimes it sounds uh, impossible, especially when it's like, big, big structures with uh, large symphonies. But uh, we have a great experience with chamber orchestras, actually, 
where they just kept the iPads and the orchestra kept spare iPads just in case some other people would have forgotten to uh, charge their own iPads, their own devices. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we've got a question from Matt Naughton asking, uh, what is the fee structure? Um, so I guess this is, this is a question for everybody, um, uh, mostly publishers. Does, it, does the fee structure change uh, for, from digital to non-digital? Uh, and then Aurelia, what is the fee structure for music? You already mentioned four euros a year per user. Um, but is there, is there anything else that we're missing right now? I think it's, it's more for uh, the publisher side, uh, I think, right? Paul, maybe you want to? Bevis, do you want to start? Or, or <laughs> yeah, I think I th nothing I think, will change. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th I think more, more generally, we, we, we have to just be careful about talking, um, talking about pricing um, in too much detail. I think, generally speaking, um, su the supply of physical and digital together will cost more than, than supplying just physical. Um, and I think supplying digital only, I can't see much changing, um, to be honest, price-wise, but um, that's probably what I would say to that. So, and, and so then advanced string parts, um, same, same thing, we'd just pay a fee to get string parts in advance for principal bowers? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think at the mo moment, just, just looking at how we deal with physical, um, I think it, it, it changes from publisher to publisher, I think, Obviously, there's a postage charge, which wouldn't apply in a digital world. And I think, you know, if, if it's a, a service to get those single string parts in advance, there may be a, a small charge for that. But, you know, it's going to differ from publisher to publisher. And um, yeah, it, it, yeah. I think as librarians, we're always just looking for assurances that, you know, this isn't going to change our budgeting too much. Um, knowing that, uh, especially nowadays, we, we might have less of the budget to go around. Um, so another question from, uh, oh, oh, this is a question about uh, Music Web. Um, so Aurelia, this is for you. Um, is there, uh, other than Apple devices, because there's, uh, I know that you're pretty much iPad centered, um, is there, are there other options available? I, I know you and I have had a few discussions about this with, um, based on how my music director wants to start yeah. thinking about this. <laughs> so what can, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so first we don't have any specific relationship with the Apple. Uh, it's just that we found this device um, to be the most powerful device for performance purposes. So it's really something that is, if you ask any chamber musician or soloist or performer, they, they would reply that they don't find any app in Android um, uh, hardware. But because now we have the web, uh, the music web uh, that is growing because we are expanding and adding more and more features, you'll be able very soon to uh, connect, uh, to open from any tablet music web, then connect your Bluetooth foot pedal and turn pages with a Bluetooth foot pedal. It will be, of course, less responsive uh, in, in the next months, months to come than an iPad, but it will be uh, pretty uh, helpful if you need to have a screen and to turn to pages with the screen and to make some minimal actions in terms of markings. So yes, definitely, you'll be able to use music in uh, any platform, any device, uh, even if the most powerful way so far is from the iPad because we developed it uh, in the native code, uh, in the native um, uh, language uh, for the iPad. Okay. Um, and just to, just to make a couple of confirmations here, um, all of the musicians need to have a music account. Uh, it's not just the librarian, okay. Um, so that's that's where the four euros per user uh, thing would come in, is that right? That's how that goes, okay. Um, looking at another question, uh, would you mind explaining one more time about uh, how exactly it works to order and work with a perusal score for individual use as a librarian using music? Cool. So uh, it's just a creation of uh, your own music ID and then to send an email to the publisher you would like to receive the, the content and ask how many, how many accesses for your musicians. In, in your case, it's just one license, the expiration date, the printing option, and it's, and it's, uh, and it's uh, done. But be sure that after this webinar, I'll send you more resources so that you can just follow the steps and uh, receive your, uh, your files. 
Uh, so then just to go on from that one for the publishers, is there, um, uh, it, can we, could we get perusal scores? Uh, are you, will you charge for perusal scores? And if I want to get two licenses for that, because there's one for me and one for my music director who's asking for it, is that possible? I mean, we, yeah, it, 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 I suppose the answer is yes, it's possible. Um, I mean, we, we, there are, there are lots of ways to access perusal scores, um, of Boozy and Hawks content. We have online scores on our website. Um, like I said earlier, 6,000 titles on, on Encoder. Um, I mean, a, a challenge for just a, a general point, a challenge, um, one of the challenges on the publisher's side is really keeping in step with all of the, the new innovation going on and making sure that our internal systems and processes can dovetail with those of these DSPs. Um, I, you know, music has an excellent API available for publishers so that our, our own websites can dovetail very nicely with, with music systems. Um, one issue is that we don't, we don't necessarily have a team of developers who are able to integrate that API straight away. So while it is on our list of things that we want to achieve within the next, I don't know, let's say 12 months, it's not something that, that's yet available. So I would just say that while we would like to be in a position to offer lots and lots of perusal scores to everybody via music, it's not necessarily at the moment at least the, the, the easiest way for us to share, to, to make our content available but it is definitely on our roadmap. Well, I, I've got another question uh, for the publishers here. Um, uh, part of the librarian's job is, is uh, fixing, finding and fixing errata in parts. Um, uh, it, it happens to the best of us. Um, but what uh, would errata noted be a, specif a specific orchestra to be, sorry, let me say that again. Would errata noted by a specific orchestra be able to be shared and applied to all active and future accesses? Is there a, or an errata list perhaps that could come with uh, with a rental set uh, electronically? Yes, <laughs> yes. This is really- Yes, please. Uh, we have, we, uh, uh, yes, please, yes. Uh, and we, we, uh, we hope that we have access to more errata because most of the errata we don't know because we don't check every played material after performance on mistakes or something like this. So we only know mistakes the librarians send to us and then we, we will uh, look through and correct the material. Uh, but if we know the, uh, we know some errata, we will send it with the, uh, with the, uh, with the digital material or we have as fast as possible corrected files because this is also very good with the digitization because we can we can we can change the material always on its newest uh, level yeah so uh, with the printed material sometimes we have a stock in new york for example and if we change a material and correct a material here in mines it needs years to to change this material in new york so maybe you as a customer in in the in us get uh, an, an an old material yeah so yeah with the digital so, material we hope you you will get always the best <laughs> files <laughs> it should it should speed these things up i'm <laughs> glad you guys are thinking about that too it actually leads nicely into the next uh, next question i think this might be our last one we don't have uh, a lot of time left um we we should be able to answer more questions if you keep sending them after the fact but um uh, in the case of composers who revise their work frequently, can't imagine that happening, are, are we likely to run into a situation where the available digital material might be more up to date than the uh, uh, available print? Like, is that, is that going to be a problem? <laughs> I, I mean, I'd, I'd like to say that, you know, if we, if a composer revises a work, then, you know, either existing sets are corrected and brought into line with those revisions or or it's junked and, and new sets ordered. Um, if ever we were out of step with our composers revisions, um, that would be something we want to look at pretty urgently. Um, just, yeah, uh, just to, to 
like thinking about experiences here, what, what, if the, what if the parts come in and then the composer's in the audience for the rehearsal and says, actually, I want to change something right now. Uh, can, can we take a, a, a rental from Boozy and Hawks and put our own PDF in there and say, here's the new page from the, public, or from the, uh, from the composer right now? Is that, is that going to be tricky with, with the way that the, the watermarks work and everything else? Or, or do you think that I, yeah, that's really I don't I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. No. Isn't it? I, it's possible. The, the page <laughs> that is linked to the, the publisher is protected. And then you can enrich it and add any media files or, or new files uh, in addition to the pages. So yes. OK. Cool. Well, I think uh, please keep sending questions and we'll get back to you by email. Um, <laughs> I say that because I'm not going to be ha have to be the one answering them. Uh, but uh, thank you, everybody, for <laughs> joining us on uh, Facebook and anywhere else uh, that, that you came in from today. and. Uh, I wish you were all here in Vancouver, but uh, I've, I've, I've heard that we might get to do this in person uh, in a few years. So uh, hopefully I'll get to see you all then. If not, uh, see you in Berlin next year. <laughs> yes. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you.